All right, here we go. Friday morning. Got a big, another big house and garage we're doing. Seems like every day we're doing big houses and garages. We're pumping this. Kind of a steep driveway. The access wasn't very good. There's no way we were backing our concrete truck up there. So, got a pump. Pump's going to help. See, we got... We had to put rocks under the tires. We got one there, we got two on the other side, one on the front. Say hi, Brian. Who's Brian? So, we're just getting ready, 40 yards here. Trying to beat showers today. We got showers coming in around 2 p.m. this afternoon. It's 6.30 in the morning right now. So we're gonna, we're gonna get going on, on here. We should be able to get it okay. The floors have been finishing up right around 1, 1.30 most days. All power trial and sod. We put a little bit of accelerator in today just to help it. So, as long as the forecast is correct, we should be okay today. So, there's a couple things we're dealing with here today, and one is obviously the weather. That's like an everyday thing. You know, if they're calling for showers in the afternoon, we got to try to figure out how we can get this done and set up before the showers get here. So, we, we think we've got that all figured out. The second thing is we're dealing with it rained the night before. You can see all that water on the styrofoam. Now there's six mil vapor barrier under the styrofoam. So there's not a heck of a lot we can do with that. Um, we just try to work it to one corner, I guess, with the concrete. The concrete kind of pushes it to one side. So we're kind of working that water out as we go. Now we are using a, a high range water reducer in the mix. So we can pour you know, a good seven inch slump, nice loose slump. The house floor is all flat, so you know pouring a, a little bit wetter slump isn't going to bother it. Plus, with the high range water reducer, you're not really hurting the strength. We do use a 3500 psi mix concrete for all our floors, and then we add the microfiber mesh in there for reinforcement. A um, little bit, of, just a little bit of air entrainment because that helps with the bleed water. The, the concrete doesn't bleed quite as fast. Now, bleed water is when after you get it screeded and bull floated, the aggregate in the in the mix starts to settle just a little bit. And what it does is it pushes up some of the mixed water to the surface, and that just sits on the surface. So we call that bleed water. With a little bit of air entrainment in there, the tiny microscopic air bubbles, they kind of help support the aggregate. So the aggregate doesn't doesn't settle quite as much. It stays put, and you don't get as much bleed water that way. So Darren and Harvey, they're kind of just dumping out the first truck getting getting that mix all dumped out that's a probably a 10 yard truck uh, Eric and Luke were screeding and I was kind of puddling for them and we're getting the I'm over there getting the edges mag now I'm using my big Darby mag I don't know why we're not using the power screed today just for whatever reason maybe the guys just want to do it by hand but usually we'll use our, our MBW screed demon <laughs> there's the pump guy <laughs> he wanted to get on camera this was so we hired the pump company that we normally use we didn't know this before he got here today but we hired the pump company that we normally use and they have three pumps three drivers and then this guy shows up and we're like who are you what are you doing here well the pump company subbed this job out to this guy because they were so busy with pump jobs this morning they couldn't do I guess they couldn't do us so we didn't know this this guy was from like two hours away um, but he showed up. He did a really good job. Definitely knows what he's doing. So we were happy with that. Eric's over there screeding that little section out by hand around those few little pipes. The, the pipes in here, I mean, there's probably a bathroom. There's probably a kitchen here on the first floor. All right, 10 yards down. Second truck's here. Brand new driver on this one. So we got Darren's down there helping to mix up. That went pretty fast. This next 10 should go fast. This is actually a little thicker than four inches in this section. That up there goes back to about four inches. The garage, we had to lower the grade in the garage. We thought he was putting styrofoam in and he didn't. So we dropped two inches down from that red line. We, now we got a blue line. We're doing four inches in the garage. So when we show up on a job like this, you know, we usually get in a, we usually get a text message t t telling us about the job, where it is, you know, usually the size, a few of the details, and then if we have to do any prep or not. Now on this one, the only prep we had to do was put the poly in the garage. The builder took care of doing the poly and the styrofoam in the house, and then you know we put the we put the boards up across the garage doors. 
but it's just a matter of it's basically a job to job thing now sometimes sometimes we will do the styrofoam and we charge extra for that uh, usually like a buck a square foot to put in this two inch styrofoam as long as they deliver it on site you know if I got to take care of ordering it getting it delivered uh, and then installing it, I'll get two bucks a square foot just to put the styrofoam down, especially on a job where there's a lot of cuts, a lot of pipes, stuff like that. But um, that's kind of 50 50 with us. We don't typically do a lot of that stuff. We'll just, you know, mostly, most of the time we're hired just to come in, pour and finish, and saw cut. Uh, we, and we always carry the poly with us just in case they don't put a vapor barrier down. We'll put the poly vapor barrier down. This one, surprisingly, you know, in Maine, usually a house like this, if they're putting two-inch styrofoam down, they'll have radiant heat tied to it. But I guess they were just going to put heat pumps in this. Now, the state of Maine has a has a state code that requires them to put the poly, uh, the styrofoam under the slab like this, on you know certain structures that are over like 600 square feet. It's got to have the styrofoam, and then. It's kind of crazy because it's also according to the population of where you live, like what town or city you're in. If it's over a certain population, then the state code applies. And then if you're under that population, it's basically just whatever your discretion is. You can kind of just do whatever you want, which doesn't really make sense. But um, now that styrofoam is, you know, those four by eight sheets, they're around 50 bucks a sheet. So that stuff is really expensive. It adds a lot to the cost. Um, so whether, you know, on a house like this where it's heated, it's probably a good idea. But some people that's, that are just building, let's say, a standalone garage or something that's not going to be heated, but they still make them put the styrofoam under, that can be kind of a waste of money sometimes. The ones, these foundation, these houses, these single, probably a single floor house here, since we're matching top of wall. Um, these are probably some of the easier pours that we have when we just match top a wall like this basically just like doing what we call a slab where the forms are set right to grade we just you know we double check with the laser the top wall make sure it's really really close otherwise you know if the top of that wall isn't isn't within like an eighth of an inch we'll just wet pad and make sure the floor at least is nice and level but probably 90% of them or maybe 95% of them we do the top of the wall is really good we don't do walls, so we just do flat work, in case you're new to my channel. Um, these guys that do the walls, a lot of them don't like to do the floors, so they sub out the concrete flat work to our guys like us. And over the years, we've worked for a lot of foundation contractors doing this exact same thing. In and out with the concrete floor in one day, and then it's on to the next job for another one for us. All right, on to the third truck. It was sprinkling, sprinkling there a little bit. We looked on the radar. There was a little blip of great green thunder showers going by. It, it kind of just edged us, so we got lucky on that. Third truck's going to finish the house, probably do at least half of the garage, and then we got the balance truck coming too. So we shouldn't have to wait around for concrete today, which is a bonus. Now, if you take a look at the the pump truck where that's sitting, you can see it's kind of low there. And then, like we said earlier in the video, the concrete truck we had to put rocks under his tires. It's uh, quite. The, I mean, the site itself is is up high off the road. The driveway is going to be really steep when these guys get done. And you know, in Maine, usually towards the end of November, first of December, all the way up through March. You know, we we can it can snow or freeze and rain any day. I don't know how these guys are going to handle that driveway, but that's not going to be fun. Even getting up into the garage from where that, let's say where that pump truck is, you know, they got to turn to the, what what is our right here looking at the video, but as you're coming up the driveway, it'll be turning to the left, kind of where our pickup trucks are, and then back into the driveway. I don't know, it's going to be, it's going to be kind of tough there for them. I don't know if they, they really thought that out. They probably could have moved the house back a little bit further and flattened that area out a little bit more. So they'd have a little bit more room to turn up there, but anyway, like I said, we're just here to pour and finish the concrete. So, but we just notice all the different sites we work on every day. You know, you notice, start noticing things like that. And then they backfilled the guy that did the excavation. He just backfilled with basically beach sand. 
So that even made getting around this foundation as far as with a vehicle worse. I mean, as soon as you drive up onto that sand, you just, the, the vehicle sinks like three or four inches and then the tires just start spinning on it. So there's absolutely no traction in that stuff. That's Luke and Eric over there screeding. So we call that wet screeding uh, or kick screeding. We just screed the concrete um, and kick as we go so we don't have to just pull it two or three times, stop, set back. We just kick in our feet as we go and fill in our, our boot tracks. And that takes, that takes uh, it, I mean, it looks pretty easy, actually. The, tr the tough part is trying to kick and screed with the screed and not and not like dig in with the screed or leave a hump with the screed as far as is is getting the floor flat there while you're kicking that takes a little bit of practice but once you get it it's kind of like riding a bike something you, it's something you never forget and it definitely is a skill that's for sure some some people get it the first day some people take a couple weeks to really get it and be smooth with it we're lucky because everybody eric Darren, Luke, and then Harvey there on the left magnet edges, plus me. All of us can screed like that, so it doesn't really matter who picks it up. Uh, we can just jump on there with each other and screed, whether it's a 10-foot screed or a 16-foot long screed board. Now the garage, the garage is going to slope out the front a little bit, which is what most of the garages do we pour here in Maine. Some people will put a center drain in and pitch everything to the center. Uh, but I would say most over probably three quarters of the new construction we do the garages like this They all slope just right out the doors and that, I mean mine does too at my house I have a three bay garage probably 28 feet deep. It slopes three inches from the back to the front No heat in it, but it is it is insulated in sheetrock So it it rarely ever gets down below freezing inside my garage and anything that drips off the cars in the winter and kind of works that moisture works its way towards the doors I've never had my garage doors freeze to the floor So that's not usually an issue in case you're wondering about that. Now I'm shooting my grades right now So we set up a self level and laser I take a shot in the back and then a shot in the front And then I split the difference and I shoot that wet pad in the middle and that's kind of what was striking off right there And then we can use that uh, screed from like Darren and Luca doing right now and then around the perimeter, we uh, shoot grades with the laser, make marks, and then snap a chalk line. And then that's what we mag our edges to going around the perimeter. So it's, I mean, it's pretty easy for us. We've never really had to use any other type of way to screed, like, a, like, a, like pipes or a screed board in the center or something to go by. It's just we've always used a wet pad like this. It's just the way I was taught, you know, back in the... Back in the early 80s, probably 1980, 81 is when I was taught how to do this. I was 15, 16 years old. And the guy that taught me had a relatively small crew, kind of like what we are right now. And then, uh, you know, he just, he just taught me how to screed like this as a teenager com coming up through high school. And that's, that's kind of what I've been doing ever since. So then anytime I, I ever hired anybody, that's what I taught him. And now... If we do have, you know, if we do have a young guy come in during the summer or whatever, for a school guy, we'll just, we kind of try to teach him the same thing. The trouble with hiring temporary help like that, like for 10 or 12 weeks, is kind of not really around long enough to get it really, really good. Because you're trying to teach them some other basic things too, to begin with. So trying to teach somebody too many things at the same time and kind of slows down the whole process of teaching them. That's one good thing about pouring with the high range water reducer too is bow floating. I mean you can see how easy that is to bow float and how nice that bow floats. Now if some of you guys are looking to get into this trade, you know, you want to learn how to pour and finish concrete kind of like we do, you can check out the Concrete Underground. There's a link in the description below where I have some private trainings. Plus you get access to me for consultation or any questions you have. Uh, I'll have a, uh, I'll have a brief description of it at the end of the video so if you want to hang out and just check that out where you can see like some of the trainings in there and I'm I'm always adding to it too I just I want to I want to help the guys that want to learn how to guys and gals actually that want to learn how to do this and make really good money at it and that's kind of my way of helping you out is by building this platform where you can learn online right from the comfort of your own home that's a 14 foot screed Luke and I are using right there. And you can see how easy it kind of is to kick screed like that. 
It's just basically like a rhythm. And you can tell that the floor is nice and flat when the ends of the screed leave a little bit of a line. You can kind of see the line that we're leaving. It's not, we're not digging in at all and we're not skipping an area. And then Darren just kind of pushes that bow float out and back. One pass like that makes it really easy. You can see there's no dips or humps under that bow float. The bow float just leaves it nice and flat. And that's kind of what you're looking for right there after you screed. You don't want to have to fill in any gaps or anything like that. That was 8.30, started about 7. That was just about 40 yards. That last truck's probably got a little bit left on him, but we had plenty to do it, so all it matters. Looks like it's starting to clear off a little bit, and clouds are starting to break up. A little bit of seeing a little bit of blue sky. I think we're gonna be okay. This should be ready to power trial probably 9.30, 10. If everything goes well, if we don't get any more rain, usually a couple hours of power trialing and it's done. So 12 o'clock, 12.30, we should be done. Get this sawed, get out of here before it rains. It's supposed to rain really hard this afternoon, like I said earlier. The garage, we did end up putting a couple inches of slope on the garage. That red line was for the top of floor, but I thought they were putting two inches of styrofoam in the garage and they decided not to. So we just dropped it down two inches. Made it a four inch floor still. Actually, it was probably a little thicker than that, but. That's why we dropped that grade down. Everything went good so far, so we'll see you back when we stop power trawling. All right, so this is a sneak look inside the concrete underground where I have multiple trainings, multiple different categories on how I teach you how to pour and finish concrete, how to repair concrete, how to do epoxy coatings. There's just multiple different trainings where I go in depth and teach you how to do all this stuff.